Yes, yes, so Hell is here. Today we are back with Dimash. This is our 10th Dimash reaction and we are here with Autumn Strong. This seems to be the most natural reaction to do next after my previous reaction which was Ikenaide. If you have not seen my reaction to Ikenaide, please do watch that first. There's a lot of information in there about the music itself, the song itself, how it relates to the original song and I might not repeat that in this video and I imagine I'll be drawing comparisons to Ikenaide as well. I received recommendations for various different versions of Autumn Strong but the most recommended one to me was from the singer of 2017. So my understanding is that this came first in the world of Dimash compared to Ikenaida. In terms of chronology then, I guess we're looking at the original Ikenaida by Koji Tamaki, then this Autumn Strong and then Dimash's Ikenaida. I'm very interested how the music has changed from the original Ikenaida to Dimash's Ikenaida because this Autumn Strong is kind of the thing in between. It's almost like Chinese whispers from the original to this and then that to Dimash's version. So Autumn Strong, I've been told that it is the same song but but different lyrics. This is in Chinese, not Japanese, and it's about a Japanese actress, Yoshiko Yamaguchi, who became famous in China under the name Li Yuzhang Lan. I hope I pronounced that okay. After the Second World War, it was discovered that she had Japanese heritage and she was banished from China. So the song Autumn Strong is supposedly a metaphor for her saying goodbye to that Chinese identity of hers. And the lyrics are about hiding one's emotions, hiding one's feelings. This video that I have here, it does have the English translation, so I will be watching that. All right, let's get straight into it. I'm very, very excited. I loved Ikenaida. Again, if you haven't seen my reaction, please do go watch that. And yeah, that's what I have in my head as I go into this. So let's let's see what Autumn Strong is like. I just watched the intro. I won't show it in this video, but they put a big narrative on how he's dressed in this. It showed the other contestants saying, oh, is he not wearing anything underneath? And then other people in the crowd saying, you look great. Such a nice song. Such a nice song. Very interesting with these lyrics as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking it's the same song that I heard and that I loved Ikenaide, but it's also different in very many ways. If you've watched my videos before, you know that this is where we go over and analyze what we've just heard. If you don't want to hear that, go to the timestamp here. So to go right back to the opening, we're in the same key as Dimash's Ikenaide, which is good. It makes comparisons much, much easier. The opening of Dimash's Ikenaide had changed the music from the original Ikenaide. I explained in the introduction how the music builds tension by some of the parts refusing to move. Actually, let's open up that music file now again so we can see. So the opening that we have now in this performance is exactly the same as the original song in terms of piano and oboe, but we have a flute now instead of an oboe. So it sounds like this. I 
unchanged from the original. The blue notes are just showing which notes have not changed since they start playing. And that causes tension because this bass line is moving down and that's changing the harmony. The flute, quite a different instrument to the oboe, different sound. The flute is very light, very airy. And here they've made it kind of a bit more, almost jazzy, you know, with these little licks. In Ikenaida, Dimash opted for an extremely airy voice. You can hear that when he's singing, the audible notes stop sometimes, but there's still air coming through. It's as soft a singing voice as you can get. In Autumn Strong, he doesn't opt for that. It's still very soft, but it's not as airy. There's a bit more power behind it. Also, he chooses to rise up at the end of this phrase instead of go back down. Notice how much of a difference something small like that can make, even though at a fundamental level, it's the same song, it's the same music. Because of these differences, even though we've just started, we know immediately that there's more room to grow in his Ikenaide throughout the song than there is in this. Simply because in Ikenaide, he started at a bit more of an extreme, a bit more quiet, a bit more hushed, more airy, going back down. Whereas here, he's got a bit more power and is moving up and upwards is usually the trajectory we associate with growth. I always love it when they show audience members face in disbelief and here the other contestants three out of four of them have their eyes closed. I think that's a sign of the utmost respect for Dimash's musicianship, depriving yourself of anything visual so all of your focus is now going on your hearing sense. So then we got one phrase which I really like in this song that I noticed he treated completely differently, again to how he did in Ikenaide. It's this phrase here that rises. <laughs> just before that chorus melody. If you notice there, the rhythms of that phrase are all equal. Bom, 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 bom. Bum, 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 bum. Strict equal rhythms. In Ikanaida, it was much more rhythmically free. And then just after that, I'll always love this top note. With that blended voice of his, ah, oh, it's so good. I said the same thing in Ikanaida. And then just after this, we have another example of Dimash here and Autumn Strong being a bit more strict rhythmically. Equal rhythms again. Bum, 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 bum. And the same phrase in Ikenaida. So I wonder why in Autumn Strong it seems a little bit more regimented in terms of rhythmic freedom. Could it to do with the different subject matter that the lyrics are talking about? Could it be that in Ekenaide, which came after Autumn Strong, he's trying to build on his performance of Autumn Strong and make little differences here and there? I don't know, there could be a million reasons. Maybe more of a liberal soul would prefer the free-flowing nature of Ekenaide a bit more. And maybe a more organised soul would prefer the consistency in Autumn Strong in this regard. I'm just highlighting this because one, it stood out to me a bit, but two, I think this is a musical feature that can really play a big part in someone's opinion about which version they prefer or just their overall view of the performance. Yeah, I'm liking it a lot so far. I'm very jealous of the audience members and the other contestants. Imagine being able to, to watch Dimash there sing this. Let's carry on. Yeah. 
Okay, in Ikenai there, at this point, Dimash starts to unleash his high notes. So I hope he does it in Autumn Strong as well. If he does, we're going to need to wait a couple of minutes because there are some things that I wanted to just go over there quickly. Yeah, I like this performance. And I'm wondering if it's because I've heard Ikenai there many times since I heard it for the first time last week. So that's automatically what my brain is expecting to hear. And I mentioned in that reaction how I was a bit upset and angry because I knew that that would be my only ever first time hearing it. Well, this is my first time hearing Autumn strong and because it's kind of the same song it's almost like another chance that first time so i like hearing the differences between the two i think it's very very cool to see how the same bit of music can be treated differently with just little nuances here and there even tiny differences such as this from where we just left off see how he breaks in between continuing on whereas if we compare it to the more recent ikanaida you just follow straight through. Right, so after that we had a little part which really stood out to me actually. Those three notes from higher to lower, the C sharp E D. In my previous reaction, I pointed out how similarly Dimash sang that to the original song. I'll play a clip from the previous reaction. Look how similarly Dimash sings this to the original. They're almost identical. So here in Autumn Strong, I really, really like it how he's actively chosen not to sing it similarly to the original song. And then in Ikenaide, it's almost like he thought, hmm, I did it differently in Autumn Strong, so maybe now I should do it similarly. In Ikenaide, though, that phrase ends on a different chord in Dimash's cover. Here in Autumn Strong, it's the same chord as the original. <laughs> I really admire it. Every decision is so meticulously thought about so that none of his performances are the same as each other, but whilst they also embody the same musical body, I think it's very, very clever. Also, Dimash choosing to, to sing just those three notes here. It makes the overall phrase more abrupt. That's quite a striking interval. And because of that, it then makes the last note more exaggerated. We're in B minor here, and the chord of B minor looks like this. Dimash's last note is this D here, but that clashes with the violins, which are playing this E here. And they're performing a 4-3 suspension. A suspension is where you hold on a note that doesn't quite fit in the chord, and then you resolve it by moving it down. So we move from here to here, finishing in that nice chord. But that's the note that Dimash has been singing all along. So basically, we just hear this all the way through. Dimash and the violins both do the same thing. They both just go. But Dimash does it really quickly. Boom, boom. But the violins are holding that note on and then they resolve. Then we get this bit. So good. And then we get this line. The lyric translation says that the words are thousands of different emotions. I think it's nice that he chooses this line to move from quiet to loud and powerful. That's like a contrast in emotions just in his line, suiting the lyrics very, very well here. All right, let's carry on from here. I think this is the highest note that we've heard so far. And if it is anything like Ikenai there, I think we might be due some more high notes. I really hope it is.
It's nice how everyone's chanting for him there, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice. I just will always love this song. I can imagine myself as an old, old man just remembering when I first heard this. Or well, Ikenaida. I think this music now will always just have this core memory in my heart. Alright, well that final section, the first thing to say is yes, we got the high notes. <laughs> It's exactly the same phrase as Ikenaida, except for the last note actually. Here he sings a C sharp at the end. Which is one note higher than your soprano is typically expected to be able to sing. Whereas in Ikenaida, he was one note lower on that top C instead. Right, then we have this power moment. Insert obligatory tenor wow moment clip that you've probably all seen a million times before. And he's adding a bit of variety to his phrases. In this case, it comes in the form of two little voice cracks. Then we get the climax a bit later on, which I think is great. He's choosing to move upwards at the end there, unlike what I thought was coming, which was this. So he moves down and then he comes off and then it's that super dramatic humming moment. I was there waiting for this intense hum moment again, but we get this, which I think is just as impactful, just in a different way. We go straight back into the music, but there couldn't be more of a contrast between this light, soft sound and that really powerful note that we had just before. Quite high as well, G sharp. That's pretty much the top a chorister is expected to sing. And to generate such power, Dimash is using a blended voice to sing that. And then what a nice run to end and shout out to the piano lick as well. Again, I was expecting him to finish low in his chest voice like we saw. Yeah, that was great. I love going into songs where I know another version of the song. I just love it. You get to see all the differences and nuances and methods by which they treat the same music differently. Really nice, that one. Really nice. All right, well, thank you to everyone who recommended that. Let's leave it there. As always, thank you very much for watching. I'd appreciate a like and subscribe. If you enjoy my videos and support the channel, you can do so by joining either the Patreon or YouTube memberships linked in the description below. And I will see you next time.